Good afternoon traders. This is Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass with your market on close report for Tuesday, October 20th. Okay, um, pretty interesting day. Uh, got a few things right this morning, got a few things wrong. Let's go through it and see what we can find out in the chart, starting with the SPY two hour. Uh, we talked about this morning that we were favoring to fade the rips and that's kind of well not kind of that's how the day played out we gapped higher on the open we reached up to this well-defined level at 347 and we were rejected there and then we came back down didn't didn't quite close the morning gap uh, still closed higher but all in all the uh, rip was faded so that would have been a nice nice uh, short entry there at uh, 347. Um, see it a lot better here on the 30 minute chart. Uh, here was the gap. We did have a little pullback. Uh, Might have been a tough long entry. Um, I was taking a look at it but I, I didn't do anything there. Um, Actually, I didn't do anything with the indexes all day long. Uh, I was kind of doing other things. And uh, anyhow, we got the ramp. During this period, we got, we had talked about this morning being careful of a news driven spike. And that's what we got. This was Nancy Pelosi talking on Bloomberg about, you know, they're going to get a deal and all this stuff and got a big algo spike. And if you look on the five minute, we actually touched this uh, 347 level and uh, that's where it was turned away. And that was your, you know, that would have been a very objective, low risk, long entry right there at 347 that we had defined this morning. Uh, and then it was down the rest of the day. So that would have been a perfect setup. Now I want to point out on the uh, on the indicators, we can see, you know, a clear downtrend in RSI. Uh, you know, each peak being lower than the last one, and then uh, being rejected here at the 50 level, and then you know coming back down. So if I were to color this in like I usually do, you know, this would be all in the uh, you know red in the bearish regime down below 50 and same thing with the uh, PPO momentum you know we peaked back here and we've been losing steam ever since uh, and now we're we made a we made a brief rise this morning and it looks like we're rolling over here below the zero line and you know from our past discussions course depending on how you're positioned you don't want to see a rollover if you're bullish you don't want to see a rollover below the zero line on PPO that's usually a very very bad sign and you know you can see this here now tomorrow very much the same setup although the you know the initial positioning will be a little different we've still got key support down here at 341.50 and we still got the same, you know, resistance levels in place. Now, what the bulls can hang their hat on is they put in a higher low. You know, here was the low yesterday. Here was the low today. So they got a higher low working. Now, if tomorrow they can pop 347, then they'll have a higher high taking this high out. So they might be able to get something going. But... <clears throat> I still think it favors the bears at this point until, you know, make price prove it. Make price take out 347 and then we will have to, you know, rethink it possibly. Um, if we extend this downtrend line, you can see that it comes in right near 347. And if certainly if I were to extend this line and they pop it, then the bulls may have something you know, cooking more substantial. But until that time, I think we have to favor um, lower outcomes. 
but the whole key is this 34150. As long as that holds, you know, uh, there is no more downside. You know, that's got to break for the bears to get, you know, any kind of traction at all. Um, and I hope, I hope if you've been following me for any length of time, I always try to give both sides. I try to keep an open mind to um, uh, the bull case and the bear case. I want to be really flexible and react to prices rather than, you know, clinging to some narrative about, you know, relief packages or, or you know, who's going to win the election, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'd rather lean on the indicators and price action and levels rather than, you know, some macro event driving everything. Of course, we know those headlines do make price move, but, I mean, you can't plan on that. You can just anticipate, you know, don't be caught max short when the news comes out because, I mean, one bar will wipe you out. So... Keeping those news events, um, you know, in the background, but being aware that they can happen at any time. So, anyways, bulls have a higher low working, but until they can break this 347, I, I don't think they have uh, really anything substantial in the works. QQQ. Uh, really did not have uh, the gap higher. They came back and uh, filled that right away. Actually reached down to yesterday's low. You can see that candle here. And then reached up to this 287 level and was rejected uh, uh, in the afternoon. You can see it here really well on the 30-minute uh, chart. I've put a green arrow here at at the um, this 283 and a half level, which was yesterday's low. That would have been a real nice long entry, very objective. Put your stop just below. You're at the channel low. Stop just below. Take your long. You never got shaken out. You never got you know scared. You were right the whole time. And we had talked about this 287 level being really important because of this overhead resistance. And we had put together a little thesis this morning that, you know, if it had got there, that would be an objective short. And that uh, short turned out to uh, uh, be perfect if you had, you know, exited your long switched to short or sat out this rip and tried to fade it, you would have had a nice afternoon. And actually, uh, you can see with this candle, we reached all the way back down to uh, 283 and a half before uh, getting a little bounce into the close. Also notice PPO, well within its bearish regime, and now threatening a crossover below zero, which would be bearish, and also RSI operating in the bearish regime uh, until it can, you know, break out from trend and break above 50. I think the uh, bears are in control. IWM had a real interesting day. Gapped higher. Went above this 162, hovered for several hours, and then gave up the ghost and came back down to actually fill the morning gap. Tomorrow's setup is exactly the same. You got 160 as support, uh, 162 as resistance. Actually, it's 162 and a half. We'll see that on the 30 minute chart. Um, but you know, closes below 160, favor a move back down to this gap support. And if gap support fails, then we're down, you know, towards this 156.75 area. And if, you know, things turn around, 
they can break out, then 164 would be your target. Um, here's the 30-minute chart. We had identified this 162.5 this morning, and we got that initial push, and it was turned back there. You know, that was an objective level to try a short. You would have gotten, you know, a decent little move out of it. Um, found some support, made another run at the high, failed at exactly the same point, and then came back down. Uh, they pulled a fast $2 out of this. They went from 162.5 to 160.5 to fill the gap and bounced it a little bit into the close. So you had two real nice chances. You know, this one played out better than this one. But, you know, that's all hindsight. You don't know how that's going to work out. But setting your stop just above this key resistance level uh, would have worked out great. Um, RSI, bearish, PPO, bearish, and actually putting in a uh, bear cross right here below the zero line, which... Um, uh, usually favors uh, lower prices going forward. Facebook, <clears throat> again, a real nice technical study. Gapped higher, back tested this uptrend line, came back, 264. Remember, reclaiming a level from below is bullish. Reclaim 264, came back to check it. Bounced hard up to 270. Tested that level on three consecutive candles and was turned away. Um, still had a nice day. Um, so tomorrow, your levels are 270. If it can pop that, pop this little downtrend line. I don't know how significant that line is. There's you know only a couple touches. But... You know, a break above 270 kind of puts it on the right side of the chart. Uh, that 270 being a pivot point, you know, if it can pop 270, make a run up here to 273.20, might have something going. Um, RSI broke above 50, and PPO put in a bull cross. Um, I'm still in the camp that I want to see, you know, price prove it. If it can pop 270, you know, I'd be a bull taking it long. Uh, but right here, you know, unless you held your long from, you know, early this morning, you're fine. Um, there's no reason to get out. If you're bullish and you got long at 264, I mean, you're golden. If you held overnight, we'll see what happens in the morning. Maybe I'll pop 270 and you'll be on your way. But if you're not in right now, you got to wait till 270 uh, is taken out from below and then take your long and see if you can, uh, you know, get a push. If it comes back here and loses 264 again, then it's right back down to 260. And don't forget, I don't have it marked in, but now there's a open gap here between uh, 263 and uh, a little below 262. Apple um, made a nice morning push, but was eventually turned back uh, below 118, which is the pivot point. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, tomorrow, if they pop 118, take it long and look for 120. But if they can't do it, I would uh, still lean short especially on a break of uh, 117 to the downside. Um, PPO is still bearish, uh, you know, trying to put in a bull cross, but, but really didn't do it. Nothing there very convincing, and uh, RSI is still bearish. So um, below this 118, um, I would lean to the short side. Tesla. Uh, had a kind of a weak day, lost this 430, 
and then made a run at it. That was your second bite at the apple if you wanted to get short and miss this move. Back test, rejected, and then lower. Uh, some guys were talking about it in the in the trading room today. Um, I'm no expert on Tesla, believe me. But just from a charting point of view, I favor 410 uh, first just because of the posture of the RSI, the PPO, and the price action. This back test and fail was a tell, and I think it comes down here to 410. I don't know exactly when earnings are. Of course, you know, if earnings are a blowout uh, and that happens in the next few days, you know, it can certainly pop 430. That's why I never hold through earnings. But just from a price action standpoint, it's got to recapture 430 for me to get bullish. And if it and if it did that, uh, I think it would be a long. But until then, I think you can stay short, especially if you got short, you know, on the break of 430. Um, Microsoft. I had uh, I tried uh, trading this twice today and uh, had one good trade here on the uh, break of 216 I I got that short um, and then I tried I tried another short when it got back up to 216 and uh, was stopped out and then I uh, I gave up on it I didn't try to you know re-enter that at the end of the day but um, again wasn't as clean as some of the other setups but it couldn't hold above this 216 level, which I think is important. Um, I think now the posture is bearish, but 213 is a major level. In fact, if you had been watching this and trading it today, you know, that touch of 213 for the first time was a, a nice objective long that you could have played for you know three bucks which is a nice little trade um, buying that touch of key support with a stop just below and riding it up and you know eventually getting stopped out at some point but you would have made a nice three bucks and, and that would have been a very objective long just as objective as this was being short on the break of 216 so bearish ppo bearish rsi i think you got to lean bearish until price can prove it um 216 would be a first level on a recapture to get long and then if 218 were to be recaptured i think you can try along there but otherwise you got to wait for 213 to go um, and then you got a lot of downside down here if that were to happen Amazon, yeah, it was 50 bucks. You know, that's not a lot in the scope of things for Amazon. You know, if you bought the hold of uh, 3200, we had talked about 3250 being a level, and it was stopped there and then, uh, you know, came back into the range. So I think tomorrow it's the same thing, reset. 3200 and 3250 a breakout here uh, gives you a long and a fail of 3200 gives you a short uh, with fifty dollars of downside down here to 3150 uh, Google had a wild day with uh, this antitrust stuff going on had a deep look into the gap recovered it recovered this 1540 1538 area that would have been a, a nice long and you got um, uh, $25 here before it got rejected but you know like all the other charts they made a run but they failed so now 
you know, you're back in the middle of the range. I don't think there's a trade to make here. If it rallied, here's your objective short. If you get stopped out, it's a long. And here, 1540 is your objective long. And if you get stopped out, you got to turn, you got to turn bearish here below 1540 uh, for what would probably be an eventual gap fill down below. Um, the posture here on PPO is much stronger than it is on the other uh, FANG names. You know, if it can get a reset right here at zero and turn up and RSI can hold 50 and turn up, might have something cooking as far as, uh, you know, a more durable long if this were to turn up and go positive and break this uh, 1567 level, then you got to run at uh, 1590. Um, I don't know if this was a coincidence or not, but uh, Netflix just reported earnings, which did not meet expectations. And price is hovering down here. When I started the video at around uh, 500, you know, 505, 495, down in here, I don't know if the cat was out of the bag for the last few days or what the deal was, but very weak into earnings turned out to be a tell for what earnings had to offer. So now, tomorrow, we'll have to see how it opens. And then you've got a gap down, which you can set up as a, a uh, bracket trade going forward for either, you know, a second day play, or if you're really nimble, uh, an intraday play tomorrow on a break of the, you know, either higher or lower uh, that opening range uh, tomorrow morning. Um, let's go through some individual names. Uh, this Reggie turned out to be a nice, a nice entry and a nice follow through. I was really happy with that. Uh, hopefully, we get some nice follow through going forward in a strong sector. That one worked out really well. Off to a good start. DraftKings, basically a freaking disaster today, uh, and I certainly apologize about that. I thought, well, I thought we had it at 45 this morning, and then they slammed it down back to support. Um, we're going to have to watch that one real close tomorrow. I mean, we, we might get stopped out immediately if there's, you know, a, a problem. On the bright side, we're at dual support. We've got the uptrend line uh, in brown that you see, and we're at uh, this breakout level. I got my fingers and toes crossed that this holds and that we can get a bounce. If it breaks, the trade was just wrong, and we got to cut our losses and uh, get out of that. That was a really poor entry on my part, and... Uh, Ah, nothing to do but sigh and move on. GRWG was up like 7% on the open and then they faded it. It's got a real sticking point here at 1850, 19. We got to break that level and have it go and uh, get back up here to this uh, 2250. We're in uh, November 1750 calls and I think we're I haven't looked at the prices. You know, we're even, maybe a little behind, a little ahead, but we really need this thing to pop in order to uh, make this trade work. NEO, whoops. NEO turned it uh, uh, green today, up by 1%. Um, still in this little corrective mode here. Um, you know, above the eight day, I think we're fine here so far. Big C, I have not been trading, but I wanted to point out, maybe you have been trading, maybe you took this short 
uh, which would have been an awesome one because look at the movie we got. But what I wanted to point out is just some basic technical analysis for you traders that are, you know, just getting into it um, to refresh your recollection of, you know, some guiding principles. We had the nice uptrend channel. We had identified this 103.50, this 103 area, as uh, both channel support and lateral support, and then it broke. And we had been playing to the long side in here and had done pretty well on a couple interday trades, and then it broke. Number one, that's your signal not to be long anymore. So if you're long for this whole run, that's when you get out. Number two. Well, first of all, it broke both lateral support and channel support. So that's kind of like the double whammy um, to get out. That's the same situation we face in DraftKings where price is still above these two levels, but it's got to hold. Also, an early tip off was RSI being in the bullish regime this whole time and boom it dropped below and that was right here that was an early tip off that there might be a problem coming not a sell signal but certainly an early warning sign and then when PPO broke below zero into the bear regime that's the double whammy. RSI below 50, momentum breaks zero, and price breaks support. And if you were nimble or watching it for a potential short, I mean, it just played out perfectly. I mean, the, the, they just pulled the rug on this thing from 103 down to 94 in a heartbeat. Um, spent a few hours there and then down to um, you know 91 here now what I wanted to point out is going forward this 89 becomes an important level why because that is the 50% retracement of the up move so that is your half back long entry right here at 89 and that coincides with uh, this value range and support so if you see price come down you know to this 90 89 level and find support then that's your objective long you'll want to see ppo start to turn up you want to see RSI start to turn up, but that is an area right here where I would be looking to go long with a stop just below. If it, you know, gathers itself, if it finds support, that would be, you know, your objective long try for a potential run back up to this uh, 103 area. Um, lift kind of pissed me off today. Uber came out with some news. Um, I think this is going lower. You know, they popped it today 3%. But we've got short dated options. We've only got 10 days to expiration. And, you know, if it were to be green tomorrow, that would really put a hurting on those short uh, or those uh, puts that we own. So, this had been working out great, um, but just get out of it with a, with a 20 cent loss. It's not a massive deal. So, um, if you're in a longer dated put, I think you're fine. I think this is going lower. Uh, at least that's what the technicals say. Um, so, anyhow. Took a long and uh, tan the solar ETF today. This is why. Um, 
we've got an impulsive flagpole, we got the bull flag, and now we got the breakout. A little bit late on the uh, entry. Uh, you know, yesterday would have been nice, didn't catch it, but now we've got the flag and the breakout and this measured move, you know, points up uh, towards 90 on a measured move basis. Um, no earnings to worry about. Ultra strong sector. I like the play. I want to stay long. That was a, a, a nice opportunity for us for a pullback um, in a strong sector. So I like that uh, higher. And, you know, uh, we're in November calls. If Biden were to be elected, I think that's going to be gas on the fire. Even if he isn't, I don't think all this is Biden. This is ESG um, governance. And everybody and their brother wants to get a solar stock in their, you know, in their ETF, in their holdings, whatever the case may be. Uh, the sector has tailwinds. And you know what? These tailwinds may, may go on for 10 years um, with a, you know, a green energy push, no matter who's elected. Um, nobody wants oil no matter what the price is, uh, they're just not allowed to own those, um, those companies anymore in those ESG funds. Even people that don't have that mandate, you know, there's just nothing going on in that sector and they're all gravitating to, um, to solar. And fun fact, back when this ETF was introduced, uh, it hit 260 back in the um, in the mid 2000s I believe it was uh, and then of course it it went way down but all I'm saying is don't think that you know 77 it can't go any higher pull up a monthly chart pull up a weekly chart there's a lot of upside potential and I think there's going to be more and more as new uh, companies emerge and get put into this ETF. Um, uh, I, I really like that long term. And you know, the best time to plant a tree was back here. The second time may be right here. When we look back down the road, you know, when we're at much higher prices, somebody's going to be saying, God, I wish I would have got it at, uh, you know, 75. At least that's our hope, right? So we'll see. All right. Um, that's all I have for you uh, this evening. Uh, I hope you had a good day of trading. Um, technically, from the larger picture perspective, nothing happened. We didn't break down. We didn't break out. But there was some really nice intraday trades available on the indexes and on individual names. Um, so I hope you had a good day of trading. We'll tackle it again tomorrow, bright and early, like we always do and see how we stand in the pre-market, uh, given, you know, what Netflix has done. I heard snap had good earnings and was doing really well. So we'll have to see if that has any kind of effect on the queues and see what, uh, what, uh, Washington DC has to say about stimulus and all that stuff. And we'll nail down our levels in the morning and be ready for the trading day. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you can get all my content. Hit that alarm bell. Hit the like button if you like the content. And please leave me some comments. Starting to get, starting to get some more, but I want to see more of you guys uh, get engaged. Let me know what content I can cover uh, to help you out in the things that you're trading. I'm more than happy to hit individual names on these recaps or do a special uh, video covering uh, request. Be happy to do that. Um, also, if you're new, check out the show notes for links to the blog and to register for all my content. Uh, if you register for the content, uh, you'll get an invite link to the trading room 
We'd love to have you in there. A lot of good guys, a lot of good traders, a uh, really friendly atmosphere, um, some good uh, camaraderie amongst traders, and I think that's important. Uh, we lift each other up when we make stupid mistakes, and we congratulate one another uh, when we nail it, and that's, that's a nice environment to be in during the day if you're an active trader. So this has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Have a good evening and talk to you next.